Hello friends. So today we'll be seeing a detailed discussion on the medicine questions which were asked in INICT July 21. Here we'll be discussing the question as well as some extra points related to each question so that it will help in your neat preparation as well. Yeah. First question. The order of symptoms appearance in case of iron toxicity. First asymptomatic B GA bleeding C GA strictures D fulminant hepatic failure hypoglycemic fulminant hepatic failure so the orders were given in each options so let's see iron toxicity in detail first what is the toxic dose that will cause systemic toxicity 60 mg per kg so if we take some 60 kilograms it will be like 3.6 grams needed so actually what happens is first 30 minutes to 6 hours whatever iron tablets which they have ingested by the site of iron absorption is duodenum as well as in the terminal part of stomach so there it will go and this iron tablets will irritate the stomach and duodenum causing bleeding ga bleed sometimes perforation or due to that much gastritis the patient will be continuously having vomiting leading to development of hypovolemia and hypovolemic shocks in this region after 6 hours after 6 hours what happens is the whatever iron which has been ingested it will be slowly getting absorbed at this stage it will be absorbed into the blood circulation so at this point of time the patient will be completely asymptomatic you can't discharge the patient at this point of time what happens next is the whatever iron which has been absorbed into circulation gets distributed into various kinds of tissues okay so here comes the deadly phase also high iron gap metabolic acidosis due to iron toxicity this will also enhance the respiratory rate next is direct suppression of the myocardial contractility by this iron atoms that will decrease the cardiac output decrease the bp leading to cardiogenic shock actually this is the most common cause of death in iron toxicity next is it can also invade the liver so much of iron is deposited in the liver causing acute fulminant hepatic failure it will result in hypoglycemia and decreased uh, synthetic functions of the liver coagulopathy encephalopathy all these things next if at all the patient survives this phase then in two weeks what happens is to that much of irritation caused na at the gas, uh, gastric as well as duodenum area that becomes healing healing starts so it will resulting in formation of strictures that they have given as duodenal strictures formation so if you see the order will be first ga bleed next the patient will be asymptomatic next deposit into tissues ards hypotension cardiogenic shock and liver failure and at last peptic strictures duodenal strictures formation yeah so how to treat iron toxicity let's know this see one is if you find that a lot of iron tablets is still in the stomach itself first thing charcoal charcoal uh, is absolutely contraindicated in iron toxicity okay next is what you can do is whole bowel irrigation they give peak peg polyethylene glycol which will absorb iron and will be excreted in stools okay this should be given until the rectal effluent becomes completely clear this is one method next is as we know antidote of choice in iron toxicity is tesferoxamine 15 mg per kg will give actually will be giving for one day so what happens is this is a chelator meaning whatever ion which whatever iron which has been absorbed into circulation those in the stomach we are clearing by the peg and those which are absorbed into circulation we are clearing by desferoxamine this chelator goes and binds the small small iron particles and gets excreted into kidney so when it is excreted this urine turns goes wine urine they call so till the urine becomes clear 
we should be giving with this less furoxamine so this is also uh, like uh, indicator how long you should give less furoxamine okay so this is in detail of iron toxicity and how to manage iron toxicity clopidogrel prescribed for coronary artery disease patients is not working in many patients because of a site 2a1 polymorphisms site 2d6 polymorphisms site 2c9 site 2c19 polymorphisms many might know but still we'll see a detailed discussion so in liver if you see there are cytochrome p enzymes which is cytochrome p 2c19 which is responsible for activation of this clopidogrel into active clopidogrel tablet so that it has its antiplatelet activity so in many individuals that in indian populations more common to have polymorphisms meaning homo like homozygous loss of this allele site 2c19 meaning they won't even have this enzyme to activate clopidogrel so there are blood tests available now to check for the presence of this enzyme is there or not polymorphisms so if you find they don't have that enzyme then better don't give clopidogrel go for some p2 vital inhibitors like ticagrel or cangrel or all these things can be tried in place of clopidogrel okay yeah neuromyelitis optica all are diagnostic criteria except a area postima syndrome b optic neuritis c diencephalic mri lesions and d focal epilepsy this endemo is an interesting disorder basic is there is a protein called aquaporin 4 just remember the location of this protein then you will know what's happening in this disease this aquaporin 4 this water channel is present densely in the spinal cord areas then in the periaqueductal areas meaning in the brain stem areas where there are uh, loss of brain brain barriers na area postremas those areas next along the optic nerve three areas so here in nmo what happens is myelitis auto inflammatory attack happens the plasma cells starts to produce lots of antibodies against this aquaporin 4 so automatically the spinal cord will be affected if cervical spinal cord is affected patient will be having quadriparesis if it is lumbar then the patient will be having paraparesis associated with sensory symptoms bladder control problems entire section of spinal cord is affected next if you see the brain stem areas area postrema the center for vomiting if it is continuously irritated by this inflammation the patient will have persistent nausea vomiting increased headache uh, increased icp features next if you see so in mr you can see does those diencephalic mr lesions can be found out and at Uh, terminal stage the respiratory centers which are present in the medulla they are all can also be involved resulting in respiratory suppression next the optic nerve involvement causing optic neuritis it can be unilateral and can progress to bilateral also uh, vision loss problems can happen so these are the location of the protein and clinical features so did you see any involvement of the cerebral cortex here no so is there any possibility of focal epilepsy no so thus the diagnostic features will include all these three except focal epilepsy okay yeah so in treatment of this disorder just think what is happening here the problem is this dancing plasma cell which is secreting lots of antibodies so we should suppress that cell either by giving steroids methylprednisolone or by giving rituximab diesel suppressor or you can whatever antibodies which are formed it will damage by activating the complements so you can give like complement inhibitors like c5 convertase inhibitors like eculizumab all those things you can give and also tocilizumab interleukin 6 inhibitors they have also been tried in this disorder so now do you understand neuromyelitis optica itis inflammation demyelination is going on where it is going on 
myelitis myelum means spinal cord and optica means optic nerve myocarditis gold standard di for diagnosis a d dimer b pro bnp c cardiac mri and d endomyocardial biopsy so what is myocarditis it is just inflammation of the entire myocardium making that myocardium flabby okay what is actually myocardium it includes the muscle part as well as the specialized myocardium which are the conducting fibers av node per bundle of his perkinje fibers everything so if this inflammation happens it will block the conduction pathway also so there will be heart blocks first degree second degree third degree all heart blocks are possible bundle branch blocks are possible next here muscular part if it is flabby non contractile the cardiac output will reduce sudden onset cardiac failure happens in any healthy individual if they suddenly go into cardiac failure then you should raise a suspicion of myocarditis covid resulted in many cases of myocarditis then the diagnosis thing the heart is failing so ventricles say bnps will be released pro bnp but it's not that accurate next is 2d echo we'll do to see the heart ejection fraction how much it is contracting how is the wall motion how it is going how is the volume of the heart everything we can see but it's not diagnostic next is cardiac mri we can do but it also varies with time pest will be endomyocardial biopsy but you can't do for every patient as you like only if it is in high diagnostic uh, dilemma with the patient having acute onset heart failure young patient having acute onset heart failure with no obvious cause if you know that cause it will help in the management of the patient proper management then you can go for endomyocardial biopsy next a old patient with multiple mucosal lesions over the larynx and sinusitis with multiple cavitatory lesions in the lungs and he has also been uh, progressing into rapidly uh, into renal failure what will you do or what is your impression in this patient a metastatic carcinoma b widespread uh, fungal infection or c anca analysis and biopsy and d is squamous cell carcinoma of lung i'm not sure of the options so yes let's see this small vessel vasculitis actually how does the small vessel vasculitis happen first if you see the neutrophil and the eosinophil granules are there one one will be the perinuclear granule and one will be the cytoplasmic granule there are auto antibodies which are formed against these granules if it is formed against this pr3 proteinase 3 which is the perinuclear uh, granules then the those are the c anca this will affect the neutrophils by activating the neutrophils so if neutrophils are activated in one type what happens is they attract monocytes histiocytes giant cells will form and a granuloma will be formed by a neutrophil then it is vigilant granulomatosis or if the same granuloma was formed by the eosinophil activation then it is churchstrauss syndrome or there is no granuloma directly whatever cytokines which are released from the neutrophils if it injures then it is microscopic polyangiitis this is the three small vessel vasculitis the pathogenesis is in short for you vigilance how to remember most common symptom is ent symptoms ear e for ear mastoiditis or granulomas will form in the middle ear leading to serous otitis media or it can also obstruct the eustachian tube resulting in same uh, middle ear infections next n sinusitis granulomas in the sinuses and granulomas in the septum causing septal perforation and epistaxis and followed by saddle nose deformity n is over next t gum strawberry gums mucosal bleeds might happen in the gums next is throat in throat there will be uh, granulomas in the epiglottis as well as granulomas will form beneath the vocal cords so what will happen if that granuloma bleeds 
that is life threatening it can instantly cause aspiration and death okay so this deadly and what about the lung involvement lung if you say same granulomas involvement in the lungs causing multiple cavitatory lesions in the lung destruction and diffuse alveolar hemorrhage pneumonitis and obviously pneumonias and irreversible dilatation of bronchi causing bronchiectasis all these are possible next with respect to kidney if you see again deadly here what happens the fibrin exudated out of the capillaries will irritate the parietal epithelial cells they will grow form a fibrin cap around the glomeruli which is the crescents they might look nice but they are deadly for the patient so here this is the rpgn rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis type is there any immune complex are you seeing here no it's just neutrophil so posi immune complex mediated type 3 and how will you diagnose vegnus chest by tissue biopsy wherever granuloma is there go there biopsy it and as well as see anka analysis treatment will be steroids you can give but mostly they will be controlled only by the cycles cyclophosphamide okay this is vegnus in short pediatric covid best drug is ivermectin steroids remdesivir all the above actually steroids only have the documented benefit in covid so you should go always with steroids only yeah next renal auto regulation is controlled by all the mechanisms except a myogenic b tubular glomerular feedback c ras system angiotensin 2 d renin uh, renal sympathetic nervous system activity so these are the mechanisms let's see that first myogenic mechanism what happens is whenever there is increased flow going through the afferent arteriole there is a protective reflex here what happens is this increased blood flow will stretch the myocardium thereby the calcium channels which are impinged there will open up so lots of calcium enters and this calcium as we know will stimulate muscle contraction and afferent arteriole will contract thereby reducing the flow the kidney auto regulates its blood flow this auto regulation is possible only if the blood pressure is between 80 to 180 mm mercury if it is less or above renal auto regulation will be lost next tubular glomerular feedback what is this interesting mechanism see here same increased blood flow is happening increased filtration will automatically will be happening so already the overworked cell proximal convoluted tubule now is exposed to too much of solutes sodium chloride it can't absorb it leaves it off in tiredness so this excess sodium reaching the macula densa which is a thick ascending loop part of enli there this macula densa seeing this much sodium starts to cry by releasing adenosine this adenosine acts on the afferent arteriole causing vasoconstriction as well as this macula densa also release stimulates the renin angiotensin aldosterone axis it it's a source of renin so thus the afferent arteriole is constricted and the blood flow, increased blood flow which was directed is controlled this is the auto regulation so all three are there but renal sympathetic nervous system activity is not there that's the end of part 1 friends we'll be continuing some more discussions in part 2 you kindly post your doubts or some other suggestions you can post in our comment section will reply as soon as possible and the notes for this video will be available in our whatsapp as well as telegram groups all the best